this computer. Okay, uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, as usually, we start with quiz. Today, we will be talking about truncated uh, Newton method and uh, quasi Newton BFJS and limit memory BFJS. And this is a quiz. It's uh, relatively long, but good thing that those are the questions that are from my exam list. So it's good uh, for you to, to be uh, acquired with them. Uh, do you hear me? Is, uh, can, can anybody respond with voice? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you can start working. I will pause my video. Pause. Think and now the key and go all slides. A second, we start with the truncated Newton method. Uh, okay, so you already described it. Yeah, I just uh, will remind you in few words. Uh, so the main idea. In which slide do we have the main idea? Let, let us see. Which slide is better? Maybe this one. Yes. Uh, Okay, so where is my pointer? Here. So we uh, want to minimize the function f of x. And uh, what the Newton method does in uh, when we were explaining Newton method, we finally got to this uh, equation, New Newton system of linear equations. But uh, one step before that, we told that uh, at every step, we want to minimize the quadratic model of our function. And this is actually a better intuitive place to explain the truncated Newton, because what we do, we minimize this quadratic model with respect to D with the conjugate gradient methods and not till end uh, not we don't do not do n iteration if n is dimension of our space but uh, usually a few tens or 100 or 200 iterations depend on how problem is difficult uh, usually i do also some illustration do we have we, we don't have illustration here Maybe I will do. Should I do it? Yes, I, the, the algorithm is actually there is some uh, Newton method uh, parent iterations, and there are a few conjugate gradients in between. Um, it's a kind of uh, we use conjugate gradient method. Yes, the, the external iterations, you're, 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 you're right. The external iterations of Newton method and each external iteration of Newton method, we solve with uh, several tens or hundred uh, steps of, of conjugate gradient for this uh, auxiliary function for every step. And then we do but, but, you, uh, but you should... Uh, who is talking? You should do homework. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Some other homework with your microphone. Please make oh, your microphone uh, without yeah. echo. I mean, uh, you should uh, sit closer to change it to something which is yeah. close to you. Okay. Yes. Yes, I'm with you. Um, so, and then we do some uh, exact line search, inexact line search in the direction that we found using the conjugate gradient. Right. Yes, uh, like uh, in 
So uh, ag again, here you have two kinds of line search. First, uh, first of all, you have external iteration. So you solve Newton's system of approximately with say 20 conjugate gradient step. And then in this direction D, which you found here, you do say usually inexact line search with backtracking or whatever, which we already learned. And inside, inside you minimize with conjugate gradient quadratic function. This is not nonlinear function, this is quadratic function. <coughs> And in quadratic function, we know that there is an analytical expression for exact line search. So exact line alpha for the alpha gradient is okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. Get Even it. for the alpha, there is an analytical solution because it's quadratic. Uh, in conjugate gradient, yes, we, we can yes. even yes, yes, yes. get uh, to our slide. Yes, the, the, uh, this is the explanation of conjugate gradient for quadratic function, and maybe it's good point to refresh it here. So exact line search, uh, to do exact line search, we compute uh, directional derivative, first directional derivative in direction dk and divide it by second directional derivative. This is expression for so-called one-dimensional Newton methods. And I just remind you, because function is quadratic, like you already know from your homework, mm -hmm. is the Newton method, uh, this one-dimensional one, it converges accurately in one step. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what, what do we gain from this truncated method? Do we gain from for uh... Speed or, or also for uh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for good questions. Uh, thank you for good questions. Uh, so we are back here. Uh, what do we gain uh, to solve uh, Newton system algebraically, like we do it in Cholesky factorization? It's about n cube, n cube divided by six operations, which is la rather large number when n is large. Say mm -hmm. if you have a uh, hundred thousand or a million uh, variables, or even several millions. So to solve uh, the system is expensive, but also to compute and even to store Hessian to store a matrix a million by million. Does anybody can tell me how many, I don't know, giga, by, uh, giga numbers it will take? Zero, no, zero. Tell it again. Zero, no, it's not zero. Le one, one thousand, let's one thousand do, giga. So it's million, million, it's mega, can? Uh, yes. Hundred uh, thousand millions a billion is giga, and the next one is terra. Yes, yes. We, we need terra numbers, and uh, for example, each number takes uh, what is in double precision? Four eight bytes. Byte? Uh, double four bytes. Eight. Eight, eight, eight byte. Eight yes. Eight. Yes, double is eight. Eight bytes. So we, we need eight uh, terabytes to store, just to store. So we don't want to do it off, uh, quite often. There is a efficient procedure of multiplication of Hessian with arbitrary ve uh, ve vector. And that's all you, uh, you need for to run a conjugate gradient for solution of this system. Uh, but, but what you suggested in the in the lecture, you yeah. said that uh, you can actually calculate the, in the multiplication instead of the Hessian itself, and then we say it's it's about the same as, as the function evaluation or the gradient evaluation. Uh, just a second, we... let, let, let me move. I think uh, it's this is this slide. Yes, 
it's not very clearly seen, but the, this is the this one, yes? Yes. So you know, uh, if I have a procedure which uh, evaluates gradients, and I want to multiply Hessian approximately by arbitrary vector z, I just need to evaluate gradient and then move a little bit in direction z with the coefficient epsilon, multiply epsilon by vector z, and compute gradient again. <coughs> And uh, this people use uh, quite often, even in practice, if you have a black box, if you have a program which computes only function and gradients. Mm -hmm. But actually, if you have uh, analytical expressions or even a program, you can uh, create another program which analytically multiplies Hessian by arbitrary vector. And uh, it costs about the same as uh, gradient evaluation. You you can uh, know you 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 already should uh, uh, watch the lecture about uh, Jacobian on graphs of gra fu function graph something like this. And uh, there we just illustrate. We, uh, when uh, yeah, actually any function which you compute in evaluate in computer, you you can express as a computational graph. Add uh, x one plus uh, ten x two. Take sinus from this and so on and so on. All this instruction can be expressed as as graph, <coughs> and then uh, to multiply arbitrary vector by Jacobian of this function we showed in this video and I strongly recommend you to watch it again actually I hope you will use it in uh, the next homework even on computing uh, gradient of new neural net network so the bottom line you can uh, multiply by Jacobian with the same cost as uh, uh computing vector function itself and the last note that uh, hessian is jacobian of gradient yes gradient is the column vector of s derivatives if you take derivative all partial derivative of uh, all element in gradient you get hessian so, uh, and applying Jacobian to arbitrary function, we know that it's not expensive. This, this numerical estimation is good also for uh, regular Newton method, right? So, it, it's, rather, it's relatively good. If you don't have other opportunities, this is a rather practical thing to do. It's but uh, if only... you... If you uh, have uh, other opportunity, it's better to compute it analytically. Yeah, yes, what, what, what's your question? The question is that uh, this uh, numerical estimation is not done only in conjugate, uh, this truncated Newton method. It's also useful in regular Newton method if we don't do Cholesky. Uh, Cholesky is actually, Cholesky is actually for, for the inverse, right? Just a second. For regular Newton method, it will be a little bit expensive. A little bit expensive. Uh, uh, one can try. So you 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 are, you are saying that each column of Hessian you you can compute numerically in this way, yes? Instead of Cholesky, but, but then, then you need to invert. But then you need to invert. It's uh, it's only for computing Hessian. It's yeah. not instead of Chulesky. Instead of Chulesky, you may apply several steps of conjugate gradient. So then you are in this framework of truncated Newton because pay attention when you when you solve it completely with conjugate gradient. Mean uh, you apply n iterations when n is the uh, dimension of your 
space. Mm -hmm. Also then you obey n cube uh, n cube uh, com computations and even this is not accurate maybe mm -hmm. and uh, Cholesky is n cube divided by six so uh, truncated Newton is special framework uh, okay, so you were saying better, better, better to use uh, if, if you're doing any iteration of composite gradient you better use Cholesky yes 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 Okay, but please uh, work with your uh, microphone because uh, this is remains also on recording our conversation. And your microphone has strong echo. It looks like you are not sitting uh, very close to it or it's some standard microphone or laptop. Just uh, take your headphones or so something like this instead. Okay, uh, now. Oh, okay. So any, wow, I have some signals around my home. Uh, any, any, any question? Okay, then uh, what was our next topic? Uh, Quasi Newton. Let's try to move to Quasi Newton. Okay. Uh, this is our central topic of today. Despite the truncated Newton is very important. Okay, I just briefly remind you uh, idea of quasi Newton. So in Newton again, we multiply inverse Hessian by uh, current gradient to get the Newton directions. And in quasi Newton, we, we say that we will calculate uh, a reasonable approximation, a reasonably good approximation to inverse Hessian without evaluating it uh, explicitly. So uh, assume that we already have something, or if you don't have anything, we just may start with scaled identity matrix. And then uh, as in usual Newton, we do line search in our direction minimize do one dimensional minimization of the objective function compute gr gradient and what uh, in quasi newton we do we update hessian by special formula which i will remind you again briefly uh, uh, we we want our he uh, hessian model to satisfy our basic uh, equation, we, we, we know we, we want that Hessian multiplied by dx should be uh, equal differential in gradients. And so if we want to do it uh, in large steps, so difference between x's in previous and current iteration, we denote as pk and difference of gradients is QK, and here is the equation which is called secant equation. Uh, so, and uh, we are looking for this update. So, we, we already have some old uh, approximation HK, and we update it each time with this uh, rank one matrix vector column multiplied by vector row. So, we want this update to satisfy this secant equation to be symmetric and to be symmetric yes and to be rank one like we already told and this will give us uh, quite a new. any uh, this is uh, what's called uh, rank one uh, update in quasi newton because there will be more sophisticated rank two update later so any 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 question any comment here Okay, and uh, let me know that you hear me, please, with voice. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and now we continue. And now we continue, just to validate that. Yes, recording is working, and uh, if you if you take secant equation and do very simple trick 
multiply left and right hand side by inverse Hessian. So H inverse H will give identity. And on the right, there will be H inverse G. And we did the not as in H inverse as B. Just I want you to pay attention in our course, we denoted Hessian as H because it's Hessian from the first lecture. And in the literature, quite often there is another notation for Hessian, and all this explanation of quasi Newton is in the reverse notation. What we call the H, they will call B, and what we call B, they will call H. But we are staying with our notation here. So we, we have a second uh, kind of equ equation that H inverse B multiplied by difference of gradient should be equal to difference <coughs> in excess. And this uh, give us a very similar uh, update formula for uh, quasi new, new, new Newton. Uh, can anybody tell me uh, why uh, it is better to use this formula instead of this one? Because you get the inverse. Yes, because if we will use this one, we can use it. So actually, it will give us a working method. But at every iteration, we will have to solve for Chileski to perform Chileski decomposition. By the way, I think uh, I think there is a missing transpose at the end. Nice. Tell it again. There is a missing transpose on V on the denominator. Uh, missing transpose on V. Yes, you are right. It should be transpose. Thank you very much. It should be transpose because this uh, expression in denominator should be a scalar. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. And uh, by the way, uh, uh, there is a, another interesting linear algebra trick. It's so called rank one update for Cholesky decomposition. So actually, one can work with this formula. If I have Cholesky decomposition of matrix HK and have a rank one of then update with my matrix H, I can write down and evaluate cheaply Cholesky decomposition of HK minus one. And actually, I should tell you that uh, sometimes the practical quasi-Newton methods go in this direction and they claim to be a little bit stable. So this is a simple approach and we are concentrating on it and pay attention that there are other possibilities. Okay. And uh, now there is uh, one more possibility uh which says uh, sherman morrison formula which is very important in general it's very good to know this formula because it's used not only in optimization but it's used everywhere so it's very useful formula and it says that if i have a matrix a which i already know inverse and I add to A some uh, rank one expression, rank one uh, expression, then I can analytically write down what will be uh, inverse of a resulting mess, uh, matrix. And uh, there is one more way to get this update uh, of inverse matrix, just to use updates for direct matrix and say that uh, for current iteration, we know HK and we know it's inverse. And we ask what will be inverse uh, of uh, the updated H. 
and we'll get the, the same formula. And because of uh, importance of uh, Sherman Morrison formula, we will try to prove it in class. And this will uh, be our class exercise. I will uh, only show you it now, and then we will go to the break. Let's see my slides. I prepared something. Uh, so again, here we have very very general expression. Matrix A minus uh, UV tran transpose. And what I say, it's easier, first of all, to get this formula when matrix A is uh, identity, yes? For this particular case. And then we will easily get a general expression. So if matrix A is identity, what will I have? Here is identity matrix. A inverse is also identity. Here is just V transpose U in denominator. And here is the U V transpose. So the expression for update become very, very simple. And we will try to get it. Uh, so we, we, we want to, to get, uh, let me change my pointer, uh, to get inverse of this expression. I have identity matrix, I subtracted something and I want to get inverse. And uh, usually what is good way to do this? It just uh, to think, I want to solve system of equ equations with this. Identity minus U V transpose X equal B. And how can I solve it? I just open parentheses because V transpose X will give me some scalar. It will be unknown scalar. I, I can denote as, as, as alpha and try to substitute uh, what I have and get finally expression for, for X. And if uh, to summarize, I, I, I will put it here. So we, we want to solve this system of equations and we denote V transpose X as alpha. Assume in the beginning that we know this, this alpha, yes? <clears throat> or we want to get it. You, you, you should think, you, you, you will get the system. I multiplied by X will be just give you X. And this will give you U multiplied by up minus U multiplied by alpha equal B. So I, did, I gave you very bold hints and uh, you can go to break. And uh, you know what? I suggest uh, to make long break. So we do 10 minutes for rest and 10 more minutes to play with this formula and try to get final uh, expression for this inverse. Uh, any question? Okay, then just uh, respond as usual with voice for me okay. to that I am not talking to him. Uh, yes. Good night. Okay, so uh, uh, we meet in twenty minutes. Uh, so uh, uh, five twenty, five forty at five forty, and I will stop my recording. And please. Uh, Okay, we are back and I see several hands, the reason it's very good. Who is willing to show solution? Okay. Uh, Yair, yes? Yes. Okay, very good. So I stop my share and you can start yours. Okay. 
So um, uh, I I don't see yet your screen sharing. Okay. Okay. Now it starts. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's good in this way. Yes. Yes. So. <clears throat> And do we denoted the alpha with the the transpose x to alpha, and then uh, we find x. We open the i x to the transpose x, and we move alpha u to the other side. Uh -huh. Then I uh, multiply it all by the transpose x in order to have something which looks similar to what we. Uh -huh. formula. And then we actually have another alpha. This alpha minus alpha b plus to u on the side. And move this one to the other side. And b plus to b. And then uh, alpha is found. Uh -huh. And I set it again into the original equation. And I get um, u multiplied by alpha. I just put the alpha on the other side in order to have a nice scale. Uh -huh. And then I see out. And this is how I find x. So um, this is why this inverse is actually this one. Okay. Here because this is what we said. Yeah. And we, we, we got the formula like in the lecture when A is identity matrix. Okay, yeah. okay very good. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I just stop. Uh, do, do, don't uh, don't finish your sharing. Any any oh <laughs> I wanted oh. to other students. Uh, is there any question, any comment? But uh, let us in the now. If no questions, then I will get back to my screen sharing. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, where is my screen? Uh, yeah. Very also. Oh. Uh, okay. Ah, okay. So this was uh, our homework, and we we are back to our slides. So, and now, so we proved uh, this formula when A is uh, identity. Any idea? How using this formula for a identity matrix, how can we get this uh, general formula? Let uh, let me try to see uh, maybe to do some writing. Uh. Okay. Um, this is another way that could apply to the general case of A. I just took uh, both sides of the equation and multiplied them by each other and tried to uh, prove that its multiplication equals I. Yes, yes. Uh, this is direct way and you are completely right. Just what we are doing is trying to to understand a little bit this formula just by deriving it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, but thank you very much. I agree that it's a reasonable, really good uh, way to do it. And uh, let me try something more with my pen. Oh, how can I get it? So I had uh, 
expression a minus uh, uv transpose yes i wanted something more general i want to invert this matrix let's uh, do simple i i want in this parenthesis to have again identity i may multiply from the left by a uh, a inverse and uh, what because this is uh, i uh, okay my, my 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 goal is this x equal b yes to solve this uh, equation now and uh, what it will tell me i can put the uh, a, a inverse uh, inside of parentheses it i i will have a and in the parentheses uh, identity yes a inverse multiplied by a uh, minus uh, a inverse u oops sorry where is undo do we have undo here yes a uh, inverse Uh, multiplied by u v transpose x equal b i are we in the situation which we can use the formula we already got i yeah. i i can de denote this as uh, something else as the u tilde yes So I I know to invert this matrix, and uh, okay. I, I I hope that you got the idea. Yes. I it's uh, a multiplied by uh, identity main minus u tilde v x equal b so we we know uh what is inverse of product of two matrices uh, inverse, inverse of if, if i have a b inverse it's a b inverse multiplied by a inverse yes so i i don't want to fear to finish but uh, so so I, I want inverse of this expression. It's like uh, a b inverse, yes. It's like this one. So uh, I need uh, so I uh, the final uh, result will, will will be i minus u tilde v inverse. I will not substitute multiplied by a inverse. So, but uh, this we already have just substitute. I, I, I give you a rough idea, but uh, who was commenting, I don't remember name that uh, just by, by direct check, we, we also could do it. Okay, let us continue. I will stop. Uh, any, any, any question, any comment about this? Then I will save. If no comments, I will clear because otherwise it will stay with all uh, other slides. They are all drawings. And uh, stop comment, stop comment. Okay. So, so we got this nice, we got. Now we got familiar with this nice formula, and uh, I just want to uh, mention one more thing: if uh, u and v are not vectors, but u say narrow and high matrix, and v is uh, wide and uh, 
with small height. Uh, there is a, sim a similar formula for matrices, and it's very, very useful. Okay, let's continue. Let's continue. Newton. Richard, can you repeat again? Sherman Morrison formula helps us to prove what? It it has extension. It has extension when u and v are not vectors but matrices. I, I, yeah, I understand it. I, I'm asking about the original. Uh, why, why did we mention Sherman Morrison in the first place? Ah, where can we use it? Because uh, here we have an update for Hessian, can? Yeah. And uh, uh, one would ask uh, directly from this formula, can I uh, get update for inverse Hessian? Pay uh, attention that uh, uh, the Hessian is obtained from previous one by rank one update. This is V multiplied by V transpose it's even symmetric okay so you apply Morrison on this equation yes and then why i can i can know and then if i did did not h inverse as b i i, I will get again in other ways the same formula this, this is straightforward but in other situations with more advanced quasi newton it's less obvious but uh, also is very used. Okay. Now uh, we come to really practical thing. Uh, BFGS that is uh, rank two, not rank one update, but rank two update. It's uh, written in some uh, open uh, explicit formula. But one could write it in a more compact way. What is rank two update? It's just two column matrix by two row matrix. <clears throat> and because we have more degrees of freedom, we can choose two columns and two rows. Uh, we can uh, satisfy more requirements, not only secant equation, but also require that. Uh, new matrix B should be close in some sense to the old matrix B. And in which sense is uh, written here, what is so-called W norm of matrix. If I have some matrix W and take uh, square root, by the way, what is square root of matrix? This is the diagonal, it's easy, but uh, it's not but if if not it's uh, to solve the problem uh, to find the matrix uh, which being squared give, will give you your your, your. it's uh, it's usually easier to get uh... ah no we, we, we actually not. oh maybe it's a small uh, auxiliary exercise if if I have a eigenvalue decomposition of my matrix A, let's try to do this exercise on empty space. If I have, uh, where is my drawing? If I have uh, some matrix, I call it A, uh, with uh, which is diagonalizable. Yes. A V is V lambda. So V lambda, even V inverse. I write it in very general. Uh, what we would be A squared? Does anybody, can anybody tell me? Lambda squared. It's a V. I, I even will derive it because it's very nice to remember this stuff. V lambda V inverse. Again, V lambda V inverse. And the, those two are canceled. And lambda by lambda, it's 
uh, lambda squared, its diagonal matrix just this uh, square entries. Uh, so it's V lambda squared V inverse. And uh, what will would be, <laughs> I can write even in this way, square root of A or A in the one, one half. In similar way, what, what, what would be formula? What do you it would think? be V square root of lambda, which is diagonal uh, yeah. times V uh, inverse. Square root of lambda uh, V inverse. So at least uh, we know one way to, uh, to get square root of given matrix. But there are linear uh, sophisticated, uh, more, more advanced linear algebra methods, which uh, give you square root of matrix. And I think that there is even function in MATLAB, which uh, gives you this stuff. Okay. But why we were talking about this? Can anybody remind me? The Fubinius oh, the theorem. Yes, 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 yes. So just a second. Now I should say again, save my drawings and remove them because otherwise they will go to other slides. Here are my drawings. I'll get back here. Ah, here. So we asked uh, what is square root and uh, of some matrix W. And uh, what we tell, and, and of course, uh, one more important uh, requirement, we, we want our updated matrix to be positive definite. Just uh, by the way, which we didn't provide in rank one uh, update. In rank two update, we are able to provide in rank one update, all our degrees of freedom were used to satisfy secant equation and to keep matrix symmetric. Yes. And here are two more requirements we can satisfy. <coughs> and uh, we don't prove anything, we just do hand waving. We say if this matrix uh, is uh, our Hessian. Then we get uh, this matrix W. How close we want uh, new uh, updated matrix from a previous one. If we measure this with W norm, where W is Hessian, then we get BFGS, Broiden, Fletcher, Goldfarb, Farchano, which is the most used quasi Newton and one of the most popular algorithms everywhere. And uh, in other case, we get uh, so-called DFP, da David and Fletcher pa Powell, which is uh, also a rather good method, but uh, BFGS happens to behave uh, more efficiently in, in more practical problems, I would say. Michael, could you explain how does the Fabinius um, norm look like, or how is it computed? It's just ah, what does it mean, Fabinius norm? Yes. Fabinius norm is very simple. It's sum of squares of uh, of elements. Uh, let's do annotate. I just remind we actually we have it in the first lecture, but it's always good to remind. Uh, that, uh, it's like L2 norm if it was a Fabinius vector, right? norm of A. Fabinius. Uh, say squared. Let, uh, let, it's easier to de define what is Fabinius norm squared. It's just uh, sum uh, of squared A elements. Ij, A, I, J squared. But we also. Uh, you learn uh, other very useful formula which we will use in the future 
uh, is equal, I will continue here to trace A transpose A. Somebody may okay. try. Thank uh, you. To prove this uh, very important. It's uh, it's pretty understandable, but yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you. Trace this is then pleasure and clear clear all drinks okay and uh, this is rank to update okay 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 so Let's continue. Uh, and uh, we learn a very general formula, which is written here. There are some other equivalent forms. This is one of, I think I got it from the book of Berzeker, but there are some uh, equivalent writings. This uh, writing is very useful because it gives you a way to write directly in computer in the shortest possible way with the smallest number of computations. So this is a very general formula which gives you also BFGS, also DFP, depending on whether you include or not include this last term and uh, even intermediate possibilities of lambda being something else between zero and transpose, for example. And uh, okay, any 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 question about this? Or just uh, respond yes, uh, that you understood because I want to hear your voice. Yes. Okay. And now a uh, very important thing that you <coughs> should pay attention in your homework because you will uh, implement the uh, BFGS. Uh, actually, uh, for method to work uh, properly, it should satisfy uh, so-called Wolf line search condition uh, in order to keep uh, the update uh, positive definite. And what is this condition? Uh, whenever we do line search where is line search in our method uh, i should remind you very briefly oh here yes you 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 take direction you do line search and then you compute gradient and update so during line search this is usual new newton line search what we learned uh, and you implemented is uh, backtracking the line search with army rule. Actually, uh, uh, BFGS requires more sophisticated line search. It should provide uh, the condition, the directional derivative in the point where you finish your line search, the slope, negative slope, should be not so negative, less negative than negative slope in the beginning of your line search. And uh, it is not, uh, by the way, if your function is convex, it uh, satisfied automatically because the slope all, all, already uh, always uh, increases towards positive when you progress with alpha, with convex function. But with non-convex functions, you can have the situation like in my picture. You you may have uh, some moderate slope in the beginning, then strong negative slope, and you have no right to finish your line search in this area. If you will do it, your matrix will may become not positive definite, and uh, the method will be broken. So line search should be more accurate than just backtracking. And uh, this is what highly recommended. So people use uh, 
a safeguard uh, quadratic or cubic uh, interpolation methods, for example. And uh, you can find it uh, 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 f min f min ank ah ili or min funk. Uh, tell it again. You said uh, the quadratic or uh, uh, quadratic or cubic interpolation. What do do I mean? Uh, let's uh, move uh, back fast. It's it's good to remind uh, other stuff. Uh, so we are in slide one one one. To remember that we should get back to it. Uh, you remember? We yes, have this is a, this is the yes. This we can be using a jack or quadratic uh, and uh, what where it was and cubic interpolation. So if one use uses quadratic or cubic interpolation or other reasonable methods, you can uh, get close enough to the minimum. Uh, now I should jump back to one one one. This is this is a method of exact language. No? Uh, say accurate. It doesn't have to be exact. But it may be accurate. Yeah, but, but, this is, but when we say that, we mean one of the options, right? Uh, again, uh, it's a very important uh, point, and it's good that we are dis discussing it now. Le let me get for, for exact. Uh, so this slide was 57, yes? And I will jump to 111. Okay. Uh, do you hear me well? No. Uh, so uh, I don't have to do really exact line search with quasi Newton, but I want mm -hmm. to get close enough to the minimum in the way that negative slope here is less negative than in the beginning, and then I will stop. And this is called. Uh, uh, wolf uh, condition. Wolf. So it's a Mario. So it's a Mario who is it with the, with the addition. Okay. The, the, this would be uh, right Im implementation of quasi Newton, but it's a little bit technical. If if you if you will uh, look on internet. For the function, I, I, I will check it now, not to mislead you. Uh, just a second. Uh, I think it's called mean funk. Mean funk. On mean fun. Mean funk. Just a second. Mean funk. Yes. Uh, if you will find in Google, I, I will write it down now. If you will find in Google function, uh, now I need to annotate. Annot uh, uh, mean funk mean funk uh, dot m uh, which was uh, written by a very nice guy i will tell you his name ah oh. i should stop always stop annotation when we, i try to do something uh, Uh, Mark Schmidt. It's uh, created by Mark Schmidt. Very nice guy. That he 
created this code and cleaned it, I don't know, maybe for more than 10 years. Uh, Mark, wow, I need to get again to annotation. Uh, uh, Mark, I don't remember K or C, maybe K, but you should check Schmidt. So th this is very nice piece of code, which implements everything. It and it implements right, correct line search. And uh, if you will uh, sometimes uh, have to uh, to use the real uh, quasi Newton, and by the way, including uh, BFGS, which we will, uh, in, including uh, limited memory BFGS. I warmly recommend you this code or uh, it's in MATLAB or Octav. And if you want uh, in Python, just looking for something which uh, remembers this code, which tells uh, this uh, is a Python implementation of uh, min function of uh, Mark Schmidt. Uh, this is uh, more or less on this topic. Uh, uh, you you can continue with questions because I see that it's it may be not hundred percent clear. Can you go back to the Tell me again. Can you go back to the algorithm again? Uh, just, just a second. Ah ah, to the algorithm. Okay, I I will save this slide and uh, clean it. Clean all the links and uh, stop commenting and go back to the algorithm. Okay. You mean this slide, yes? Yes. Okay. So here is not in it, so it means a real rule, right? Uh, we will ask you in homework to use Armio rule, uh, but uh, with uh, one more exception. If uh, you will see that uh, wolf condition is not satisfied, if you see that this condition is not satisfied, you just skip a matrix update. You don't update your uh, inverse Hessian model in this iteration. It's yeah. not very good recipe. It's just to make your code to work somehow. The good recipe would do would uh, be to do really right and proper line search. And I refer you to the code of uh, Mark Schmidt for this. Okay. Okay. Also, also, you mentioned you that you can do absolute. Uh... One side of the, of the work condition. Uh, you definitely should, should uh, do something with your microphone next time. Uh, repeat, please, your question. I mean, you said about something about uh, absolute value on the. Ah, instead of just this inequality, inequality with yeah. absolute value, and it has some special name. One can use it, but this is uh, minimalistic. This is uh, the weakest uh, requirement that it's enough to check for this condition. Okay. okay. And now we are coming to uh, the important properties that it may be close to conjugate gradient, and but you will find all this in the lecture. Uh, and now very important thing, uh, Limited memory BFGS, which actually you already explained. Uh, you should explain it to me and not I explaining to you, but still I, I will uh, get back in few words. So in usual BFGS update, <coughs> you, we, we do something like this pictographically. We take uh, all the inverse model and do rank to update. 
and uh, if you if you follow several steps so we start with some original be not do one update next iteration do next update and so on and that iteration k we will multiply we actually won't multiply the last matrix by our gradient uh, vector you know in order to get uh, newton direction <coughs> and what we say to multiply such expression by gradient by a vector you don't need to store matrices it's enough to multiply those two rows by gradient and then the result multiplied by two columns which is much cheaper uh, which is uh, written actually here and this is uh, on uh, on one feed uh, uh, the idea of very important method limited memory bfjs which is used everywhere including neural networks uh, questions about this It's um, hard to store um, for a long time because you, you have, let's you have a lot of iterations. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, I understand your question. To uh, to implement this formula, like I told, if I, you have a few hundred iterations, you need to store a few hundred such uh, pairs. But what actually people do? They only store uh, last five, pa five pairs or eight pairs, something like this, rather limited. And uh, practice shows that uh, this is in enough. They just uh, remove the oldest one and put in memory the newest one. And, oh, so, so uh, we but, but we start from I again? We start with I? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, and it's working. I uh, warmly recommend you to to go to the book uh, if you are interested and I would say everybody should be interested in this method because in modern uh, computation in machine learning it's uh, the central one of the central methods so we have a book of Nocidal and uh, right in our list uh, in web page of, uh, even of our course right uh, book uh, which is called uh, i think numerical optimization or something like this and uh, nocidal he is uh, one of authors of lbfjs and you can imagine that in his book, the method is explained very nicely. So why there is no end in BFGS? Uh, why there is uh, one more co-author? Because they wrote a book on all optimization, on all practical optimization methods. And LBFGS is one chapter in this book. So i i may guess that maybe right contributed more to other chapters but i am not sure maybe here you said, you said, you said that if you use for neural networks don't we use neural, only gradient neural network people use of course uh, stochastic gradient and uh, some close related methods but for some problems there are some problems where when you need really accurate minimum and then uh, LBFJS is one of very important, and people are also working of doing a stochastic version of LBFJS. Stochastic mean uh, that you update uh, not if your objective function, say some maximum likelihood or whatever, is sum of terms, uh, each term uh, related to your one training example. So to use classical method, you would need to compute the uh, entire function, the sum over all examples, over million examples. And the uh, stochastic kind of method, they uh, say, okay, I will compute only partial sum and partial gradient, say, of 10 examples or 100 examples, and do update of my uh, parameters with this small portion of data. 
And so how, how, would the, the like, how, how would it look like? How would it look like? How would it look like with the UV transpose and the update of the beat for every sample? Ah, you you ask me a question: How limited memory BFJS would look for stochastic optimization? Yeah. I I just will refer you to papers, and okay. uh, I think um, I think Nosidal is working actively even today in this area, and he's trying to adapt. Uh, LBFGS to stochastic optimization. Just go to Google and look for papers. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, just uh, I, I uh, if no question, I will yes again save and clear drawings and remove annotation. And that's uh, all for today. And as usual. Uh, we are staying uh, uh, for free conversation and uh, reception hours. So I, I will stop my recording.